Things First is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Hi, everyone. Good morning and welcome to First Things First. I'm Jenna Wolf. That is Nick Wright. Howard Beck is joining us on the show this what morning. Up, Good morning, Good Howard. Good morning. Thank you for taking the Nice to see. We got a great show on this rainy Monday morning here in New York City, but fret not because how about this? Brian Westbrook is here. Antoine Walker is going to join us. And Daytona 500 poll sitter Ricky Stenhouse Jr. will stop by. But with Howard here, we're going to start in the NBA. So let's do just Howard's that. Howard's bummed. You wanted to start with NASCAR. I he said did. we got to start <laughs> we with the Lakers. We talked him out of it. We talked Next him out time. of it. Here we go. It turns out that the Lakers will not be signing free agent point guard Darren Collison. That after a very public courting. Remember, he sat courtside with team owner Jeannie Buss last week. The 32-year-old point guard decided to remain retired. And now the Lakers, who stayed put at the trade deadline, reportedly turned their attention to recently waived the young waiters. Nick, are the Lakers in trouble after not signing Collison? I think in trouble is far too strong. I do think this is a legitimate blow. And I, I want to say this on, on the top. I don't blame Collison, obviously, for deciding, hey, I thought I wanted to be retired. I want to stay retired. It's his prerogative. He seems to be very passionate about uh, his work as a Jehovah's Witness, and God bless him for it. And I also don't blame... Rob Palenka for not being super active at the deadline. I wouldn't have given up Danny Green and Kyle Kuzma for Marcus Morris. And some would argue, well, he should have worked around the edges a little bit more. I, I have no idea what it's like to be Rob Palenka right now. Kobe Bryant was his best friend. He is very close with the family and dealing with all of that in the context of we have a trade deadline coming up. If there's ever someone that deserves a bit of a pass, it would be Palenka in these couple weeks. With all that said, the Lakers need... Another ball handler. Darren Collison, for me, Howard, this offseason before I knew he was going to retire, was one of the top free agent targets. Once they missed out on Kawhi, when we were listing people, I said Danny Green, Seth Curry, Darren Collison were the types I'd go after. Seth goes to Dallas. Danny retires. Or I'm sorry, uh, you have Collison retire and they get Danny Green. If they could have gotten Darren Collison, it would have been great. They don't. And now when you're to the waiters portion of the buyouts, that's not a great option for anyone. There's a reason Dion Waiters only played three games for Miami this year. And there's a reason that despite his talent, he's bounced around the league. I, I still think this team can win the title. They'd still be my pick to win the title. But it is going to be all on the shoulders of LeBron James come the playoffs because they have no one else they trust handling the ball or initiating the offense. Which is why... And we may disagree on this when we do. I have, my pick was the Clippers ever since the preseason, or even ever since July, because what the Clippers have that the Lakers don't is Lou Williams. Like, that's a very big luxury to have, is a Lou Williams, a guy who can score 20, 25, 30 points if you need it, who can handle the ball off the bench, who can anchor a second unit. And the Lakers don't have that. Now, the benefit for the Lakers is when you get to the playoffs, you and I both know, you put the ball in LeBron's hands, you don't worry much. He's going to play big minutes. He's going to correct. He's going to take the load. As he says, his shoulders are, are broad for a reason, for all kinds of reasons. He'll be fine. They will be fine, I think. I don't think Darren Collison is the guy who was going to make or break the Lakers season. But I've always been concerned, and it was why I leaned Clippers by a little bit, Nick, not by a ton. I always lean Clippers because I thought they have that luxury that the Lakers don't. They both got their big two, and those both have their benefits. It's having that Lou Williams type. Collison wasn't going to be that for the Lakers, but he would have at least given them another ball handler who could defend a little bit, who could shoot a little better than Rondo. Knock down threes. But they, you know, they do have other guys. They do have Rondo. They do have Avery Bradley or an Alex Caruso, like some guys who soak up some minutes with the ball so that it's not in LeBron's hands. 100% of the time. Did you think Olsen was going to be the tipping point for the Lakers, that one last piece that they needed? Oh, I think, yeah. I would have rather them get Collison than Marcus Morris. I would have, like, the, he's the exact type of guy that can knock down shots, that can run an offense, that can defend a little bit, the, the exact thing they need. But to, to Howard's point about it all falling on LeBron, I think the minutes thing's important. He's going to play 42 minutes a game in the playoffs. Like, that's what he averaged his last playoff run. And keep in mind, there are some blowouts in there going in each direction where he plays low minutes. So in close games, he's going to play at least 42, if not 44 minutes. The question is, can you survive those five to seven minutes a night where he or where he's on the bench? Which, in the past, LeBron teams have struggled surviving. This year, when and the reason why I'm as, uh, as high on the Lakers as anyone over the Clippers, is because when LeBron's on the court, they're the best team in basketball. 
basketball. They, they, they have the best numbers. We're the best team in the West. Milwaukee might be in a stratosphere by themselves at the moment. But they are clearly better to me than the Clippers when LeBron's on the court. The problem has not only been when LeBron goes to the bench, but it's been that Rondo is soaking up those minutes. And Rondo right now is a detriment to winning. The other benefit to Collison would have been he would take those Rondo minutes away like the, hopefully the, you, you would hope he would take those Rondo minutes away I don't Fair. know if Frank Vogel has the stomach to do something that Luke Walton didn't have the stomach to do which is say Rajon man it, it's 2020 what you, you might be a Hall of Famer one day but that's based on what you did in the past those minutes should be going to Alex Caruso. Alex Caruso is not a great player, he's not a perfect player, but it is, we now have two seasons of data that with the Lakers, he's a more effective player than Rondo. That's my concern, is that when LeBron goes to the bench, even if it's just into the first, into the third, does a seven point lead turn into a one point lead because the Lakers crater with Rondo running the offense? Right, and then the, the alternative, or the, the I guess the antidote to that is, during those LeBron minutes, you better just pound whoever's in front of you. Yes. You better just get a nice big cushion so that when he's on the bench, you've got a little bit to play with. And you did hear from, which is a little bit concerning, from LeBron this week that he knows he has to play better. He doesn't like the way he's ending games and finishing games. So you kind of hope he gets the rest he needs going down the stretch where he's not put in that position where everything does solely fall on LeBron James. Well, I think the one seed matters. I, I, I'm the only person in the world anymore that cares at all about the regular season, that thinks the Clippers, you know, getting blown out by 30-some points to a terrible Timberwolves team that we actually should pay attention to those things. But... LeBron, for them to keep the one seed, LeBron's going to have to play 37, 38 minutes a night down the stretch. Him feeling a little worn out near the All-Star break, man, you can set your watch to it. LeBron James teams, and LeBron in particular, the weeks leading up to the All-Star break is when people start abandoning ship. It's when, it's when the, the team seems to be at its low point. I don't think they're at their low point right now, but I think you'll see the, a better version of the Lakers here in a couple weeks than you're seeing right now. All right, before we go to break, we want to go viral, dip into the XFL oh, for this okay. one from this weekend. The St. Louis Battlehawks taking down the Dallas Renegades yesterday, 15 to 9. There is only one way to celebrate winning your XFL debut, and that is by crushing some, let's call them adult beverages in the locker room. Oh, that's how we're doing it in the XFL, Howard? <laughs> Like a championship celebration after week one? That's that's how I look every time I file a story. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Howard's in the back, just <laughs> crushing Lacroix off his head. Is that Lacroix? <laughs> why has it got to be Lacroix? I just feel like that's more of a Howard drink oh, than. Oh like wow! Why are you <laughs> typecasting? Am I right or wrong? No, you're. I, I'm not a big Lacroix. Oh, oh no, come on! He's drinking uh, Bud Heavies oh, all the way. Close. Uh, we'll take a break. Coming up. Should the 76ers build around Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid? This that seems I really to be the question. It's next on FS1. You can always check us out on the Fox Sports channel. It's on Sirius XM. We'll be right back after this. Howard gets up early for us and you call him.